John chapter 6 verses 60 to 69. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life, you have the words of everlasting life. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard, who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe, and the one who would betray him, him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me, unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life, and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe, and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. This reading follows the reading where Jesus instructs his listeners to eat of his body and drink his blood. The reading clearly shows that Jesus was not speaking, nor is understood in a symbolic, or metaphoric way. If Jesus had been understood in those terms, people would not have found his words a hard teaching. If Jesus had been understood in symbolic terms, people would not have drawn back and no longer accompanied him. Keeping in mind that Jesus is God, and knows the hearts of men and women why didn't he say I am only speak in figurative language, then no one would have left him, he meant to be understood in a literal sense. Some will say the entire Bible and all its writings are literal, with the exception of John 6, now does that make sense? Of course not. Many disciples left because Jesus rejected their desire to make him a political king, because of his demand for personal faith, his teaching about atonement, his stressing that salvation comes through the grace and mercy of God. All proved to be difficult for many people to believe, because his teachings were opposed to the world values they were taught since birth. The materialistic or the secular world cannot solve spiritual matters with human logic, faith is required. To one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. St. Thomas Aquinas Those who defected, who left, might have seen what Jesus was headed for, disaster, or death, and they were leaving the, gr leaving the group in time to avoid any association with him. Those who drifted away would have remained with Jesus if his career was on the upswing, and it posed no threat to their safety. The defectors had come to Jesus to get something from him, a miracle, the witnessing of a great healings etc., but when it came their time to suffer for him, or giving to him, they abandoned him. At first their Christianity bloomed and flowered, but lacking the deep roots of Christianity, they came to expect God's blessings, rather than to give thanks for them. They understood blessings as commonplace events, not in need of God's intervention, so their flower of faith lacked faithful nutrition, it wilted and then died. The third group, the group who remained was a determined group represented by Saint Peter. There were many things they did not understand but they had faith. Christianity isn't a philosophical teaching to be accepted or rejected. Christianity is a loyalty which finds its foundation in love, built on the deep-rooted firm soil of faith. There are two models of Christianity. The first is like Peter who is willing to take the risk of opening himself up to Jesus, who is willing to teach everyone the words of eternal life. The second model are people like Judas. They are nominal Christians, Christians in name only. They do for themselves what teachings they need to follow and what teachings are just suggestions. They remain in the church, say the words, follow the rites, but fail to seek the nourishment, an understanding which will form a sustaining, and a deep-rooted faith. They drift away because their roots were not firmly established in love and faith. We can only hope and pray that, like the many who preceded them, they will recognize the errors of their ways and to one day rediscover or return to the church. Wondering about the depth of your faith? Jesus explains the continuum of faith in Luke chapter 8 verses 11 to 15. Hopefully, our faith mirrors the faith, of Luke 8, of Luke 8 15.